start the service by singing that song. Open your songbooks to page 323 or look up on the screen for the words as we sing more about Jesus. More about Jesus would I know, more of his grace to others show. seated we're going to do things a little bit different brother hernandez is going to come up and he's going to share a testimony about our sunday school program he is our sunday school children's ministry director so he just got that title last sunday night so he's going to share a little bit about um our sunday school ministry and some things that uh, he has a heart for but brady this sound, could you turn it down just a little bit? Is that too high for you? Yes. A little you sure? Bit, yes, a bit too high for me. All right. On stage or for yeah. everybody else? Online? Can, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Oh, by no, the oh, way. Oh, that guy left, didn't he? The, if you want to help Brother Brady in the sound. Oh, yeah. You need help. I have a ministry, you guys. Yes. Oh, hey, if you all turn around. If oh, that's that what way. you guys look like. Hi. <laughs> all I know is this. You know, the widow's peak? That's what Brother Brady sees every single day. He is in charge of our audio visual, video department. And if you can help at all in that ministry, that guy's the guy to see. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm next to the bathrooms, apparently. Yes, he is. Amen. You know, all I got to say is, Brother Brady, I don't want to get up to you here too long, is you actually got to get two mirrors to see the back of that head, to, to see that. Amen. Going. So you got to really put some effort into that. <laughs> But be that as it may, I'm hearing about the Sunday school. I was uh, told to give a testimony, and the testimony I can give is what happened as of late. Uh, the Lord's been calling me uh, to, to teach when I was teaching uh, men's uh, or the adult Bible study, and that was a blessing. That was a blessing to me because I never thought I'd be teaching anything, let alone teaching uh, adult Bible study. But there was a need in the juniors. And my wife was, uh, uh, Miss Kim was filling in and she was getting different helpers that, that were coming in and they were teaching and different people were coming in and filling in. Praise God that we have people that are volunteer. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm about now. When I went in there to volunteer because I wasn't teaching adult Bible study, I got a blessing that I, I never saw. You know, God reveals some things to you sometimes. Yeah that you don't know but if you take that step of faith and that's what we're talking about and have a willing heart God will use you Amen. well it so happened that uh, I have a heart I have a heart 
but it so happened that I have a heart for the juniors because they're thirsty. They're thirsty for the word of God. They absorb. I mean, how many juniors, fourth through fifth, sixth grade, can memorize Romans 12.1? That was impressive to me. That was a blessing to me. That, that's, that's something that most of us can't remember, but let, let alone these young kids. So they're thirsty for the word of God. Amen. And to see them mature and their eyes glow, you could get a blessing out of that. Amen. And that's what the blessing, so I decided I'm going to stay there and, of course, be ready to teach adult Bible study if, if need be. But all, all God wants you to do is have a willing heart. Be, willing, be ready to take a step of faith and step out in faith, and he'll use you. I think my biggest fear is not being used of God and not <laughs> seeking his purpose and him putting me on the shelf. So if God's calling you to teach, no matter what, what the youth, I mean, some of you have kids in there. If God's calling you to teach, to teach Sunday, or even help out, or even volunteer for 30 days, yeah. take that step of faith, and I guarantee you, you'll get a blessing. Amen. Amen. So we have booths out here all uh, a after, after church. We got some free gifts. We got uh, cookies giveaway, whatever the, they decide. But take that step of faith. Amen. And the hardest part, to me, is signing your name on there and saying that I will. As Isaiah said, here I am, send me. That's right. And that's all he's required. So that's what I got out of it, and that's what, and I'm sure you'll get the same blessings that I have. And again, take that step of faith, and you'll never be satisfied. Could you just stay here and open us in prayer too? That'd be great. Amen. Let's all go to the Lord in prayer. I dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you, Lord, for the message we're about to see. Thank you for the pastor, Father, and and the youth pastor, they have vision, Father, for this church. I pray, Father, that you be with us, Father, that we're attentive to your word, Father. And there be one that doesn't know Christ, that today be the day of salvation. Father, we will thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen.
All right, let's all stand once again. Open our songbooks to page 150 as we sing, My Faith Has Found a Resting Place. Let's sing verses 1 and 4. Verses 1 and 4. My faith has found a resting place, not in device nor creed. I trust the ever-living one, his wounds for me shall bleed. I need no other argument, I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died, and that he died for me. Let's sing out on the last verse, verse number four. My great physician heals the sick, the lost he came to save. For me his precious blood he shed, for me his life he gave. I need no other argument, I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died, and that he died for me. Amen. Please be seated. Well, good morning. Good to see you. You look like you're not awake this morning. <laughs> If you're here this morning, say amen. 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 Welcome to Vision Sunday. Glad to have you here. You see our new theme up there? Yes. Yeah, he must increase. Turn your Bibles to John chapter 3. I'm going to preach the rest of the time. John 3, I'm just kidding. Oh, you guys all just gave me that look like, oh no. Wow. Mrs. Bausch was excited. She was like, yay. Yeah. <laughs> she said she had to go right now, actually. John chapter 3, and we're going to read a couple verses here around our theme. Look at verse 27, John chapter 3 and verse 27. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except to be given him from heaven. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the, is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my, is my, this, excuse me, this my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. Boy, this year, I'm excited. Last year was glorified. This year, you know, we need more of Christ, amen? amen, and less of ourselves. We need more of him. We need more about Jesus, could I know? Amen. Yeah? That's a good old song. I don't know if you heard that one this morning, but it's a, a good song. I'm excited about this year, working on it with you, to decrease and him to increase. The world is full of selfish, prideful people, amen? amen. And this room is no different. Can I be honest? Yeah. Right here, I'm pointing at me. This room is no different. Selfish, prideful people right here. But this year, we're going to work on it, amen, amen. together. Amen. We're going to let him be in charge amen. and put me in the back burner. Yeah. With that in mind, I want to, before we get into it, I want to take this bulletin out right here. You have this yellow bulletin that ushers gave out a bunch of those. Well, I want to go over what God has already done. We, our whole theme last year was to glorify him. Let's take an, a moment and give him the victory this morning. Amen? Amen? Say, thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Page number one there. Victories in 2018. Look at this. 128 salvations through the Rescue Mission, VBS, Teen, 60th Outreach, Junior Church Spanish, and other events. That's a blessing. Can I get an amen? amen. Yeah, that, we can clap on that one. 128. Now, that doesn't include some that have been out soul winning, got saved here or there, around that maybe got recorded or didn't get recorded. But that's, that's fantastic. 24 people baptized. Amen. 24 people baptized. Yes. How many months in a year? 12? Two that's two months. That's good. That's, we could do better, but that's good. Amen. amen. That's good. 60th anniversary. Lord, we put some, some effort and some extras into that 60th anniversary day, and I was excited about what God's going to do. We had some goals. The Saturday block party, I was praying we would have 200 neighbors just within the sixth box, any direction of this church, that we'd have 200 people here from them on the Saturday. We did provide free lunch. That helps. Amen. amen. We had 180 out that day. Yes, I, I, can't, I can't complain about that. And we know our neighbors. Yeah. That's a good thing. Amen. Yes. 
a good 60 years here. Don't know your neighbors. That's a bad idea. <laughs> then on that day, we had a goal of having 500 people here. We had 487 attendants. That's better than the, the, the year ago from that, amen? Yeah. We didn't have 487. We had 27 saved that day. Amen. Over the course of that weekend, that is, we're going to do that again. And everybody went, amen. Yeah. Oh. amen. And then you need a nap, amen? That's good. We knocked 48,000 doors, canvassed 21,000 doors, and mailed out 15,000 postcards. Miss Peggy, that's you. Did you know that? 15,000 postcards. Amen. There's a group that comes on Saturdays, and they... Stamp and label and write and send out to all our new movements. I got the new list. You got to be here next Saturday. I got the new list. Got to be here. They, and nailed them out. 15,000 people that just moved into this neighborhood said, there's a church that wants to love on you. Amen? Amen. That's good. Look at all those diapers that were changed in the, ba in the nursery. I don't know if that's accurate, honestly. We just made a number up because I thought it was funny. Uh, there's a lot of diapers that get changed over there. I don't know if that many. We did put a billboard on the freeway. We've never done that before. Excited about that and how that happened. Easter, uh, Easter brought in 13 visiting families. That's a wonderful. And then uh, the va vacation Bible school, 94 in attendance, and then six salvations that day, and then all the follow-up for the programs. Next page. Look at this, what God has done. We put on the project on the board this year, 2018, we put on the board there to get some things fixed around here. Amen? Yeah. Always something that needs fixed. We painted all the buildings. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And you say, well, Pastor, that, I don't even think about it. You don't. <laughs> but we need to have a best foot forward for the Lord. Amen? Yeah. Buildings that look paint falling off and looking kind of cruddy. Hey, these are older buildings. This, is built, this place has been here for 60 years. Yeah. I see some of you are about 60 years old. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Now and then you need a little spackle, amen, a little paint. Oh, I'm in trouble. Yeah, go ahead. Amen. I'm sorry. You, you know, after, after church, you can yell at me. Go right ahead. I deserve it. So we did that, though. It needed. If, just think if you got your house painted, you'd be excited about that, right? Some of you would like neon pink, but that's okay. We changed out these posts out here, and you say, that's not much, but it sure adds to the look, and I'm not running into all those posts anymore. Yeah. They were, I'm, I was always afraid some, some, some lady would turn, and boom. so there's half the posts there were, yeah. and, uh, and it looks so nice. We added the wood decor, trying to make these older buildings look a little nicer. The 60th anniversary video. You say, Pastor, why do you put that on there? Because that was two months of my life. Yeah. I will not make a pe fun of people who do those commercials and make those videos anymore. I, my wife and I wrote the script, and then the, we hired that guy to come in, and he said, this script is trash. Let's do this again. And then that video and all that, you know, that's a great, it's on our website, it's on our Facebook, and that just sends out something about our church that we care, we have a vision, we have a direction, and we do, do we not? Amen. You better say amen, man. I'm going to send you over to the Spanish department if you're not. Amen. I'm grateful for our Spanish. I was just over there. That's why I was a little late. Man, they sing over there. I want to yell so they hear us. And they go, what's going on over there? Because they sing. They were just singing, save by his power. Man, they were singing. It was good. Hey, all right. Now, the next part here. So now we're past 2018. Now let's look at 2019. We're going to have some goals this year. Amen spiritually right off the bat let me just say my goal for this church is 2019 that we would have the best discipleship program in the world yeah. brother cribs is coupled with me we're working on that getting it together if you have not been discipled or you say what does discipled mean you're the guy we're looking for yeah. okay we want to have people know what we believe and why we believe it, and why we have the name of the church that it is, and understand the basic foundation of what a biblical Baptist is. Amen? Yes, amen. And if you've never done that, even if you've been in this church four or five, one year, two years, ten years, see Brother Cribs, see me, we'll get you signed up. It's easy, simple, we'll work around some of your schedule, and it's, I think it's 13-week kind of a program. That's my heart's desire this year. Yes. People don't know what they believe anymore, yeah. or why they believe it. And I want this church to know. I don't want a Jehovah's Witness coming to your door and you go, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Right. Yeah. I don't know. That's not good, amen. That's not good for your kids. Yeah. That's not good for your grandkids or your great-grandkids, Brother Cal. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He's, having, he's having a great-grandkid here real soon here. You've got to know what you believe, brother. Yeah. 
or at least keep reminding yourself of it. So we're going to do that. That's my heart desire spiritually, that we be organized and intentional about discipleship. And then we got a bunch of college kids around here. Yeah. That's a good thing, amen? amen? You know what college kids are normally doing on Sunday morning? They sleep till noon, amen? <laughs> because they were up till 2 doing we don't want to know what, amen? Amen? I want a place for our college kids here. We don't have space. We don't have people. We don't have anything. But we're going to figure it out, amen? We're going to meet in the kitchen, and we're going to go sledding every other day or something. We're going to figure it out this year because, you know, I, have, I was a youth pastor here for all those years, and I see these, well, there's a bunch of them up here and some of them out there. There's a bunch of them working. They're busy, uh, and uh, I want a place for them to feel important and belong, amen? amen? Belong. We have senior breakfast, and we have youth group, and we have Spanish, and we have... Nothing for the college kids, and that's, that's, that's not good. That's not right. So you pray with me. We're working on that, developing that out. Then all of this takes money and people. Yeah, people and money. People were excited about, well, we're going to see. You're going to sign up right after church today. We're going to see out there. But it does take some money. So the next page here, goals for 2019 financially. Last year, we had on the, uh, the list to change out the church sign, to update it, bring it out of the 80s and into the 90s at least. And so that did not get done last year. Just honestly, ran out of money. It happens, amen? Yep. It, and so we put that back on there. I'd like to get that sign updated. And, and uh, that's a good impression of our church as people drive by there. And then we have to change out our wireless microphones this year. Uh, T-Mobile and Sprint are merging, and they bought... All the sound wavelength, I don't understand, ask Brady, for our wireless microphones. Pretty soon, you're going to get a cell phone call on the wireless microphone, and then we're going to get fined for it if we're not careful. So we have to get that, and you say, Pastor, that's boring. Yeah, it is, but it is an expense, quite a bit, and this is an estimated cost there of just getting the basics that we need there and I'll get that done. We want to save some money. We want to be good stewards of our money, amen? You give in your tithes and offerings faithfully. I want to do my best to be good stewards. So we're working on getting those halogen light bulbs on the parking lot changed out from guzzling electricity to sipping electricity, amen? Yeah. Amen. I did it at my house, and it did make a difference. And those ones up there have been there since forever. And Brother Danny's worked real hard on getting that estimate out there and getting that light done. Our water bill goes up January 1, and so we're going to work, in, work on some things, other things there for water bill. And then the, probably the biggest one on here, what did I do with that? There it is. Everybody reach down and grab one of these, would you? They're in the pew in front of you right here. Grab one of those envelopes, envelope, envelope right there. See on there it says tithe. Do you see that tithe? Tithe is a tenth, 10%. If you're a member or a good Christian, you ought to be tithing, giving a tenth of your money to the Lord. It's what he required and asked of you. I'm not asking it. I'm not requiring it. It's God. You don't like it? Take it up with him. Amen. That's between you and him. Missions. We're going to have a missions conference pretty soon here. This church has a global vision. You say, yeah. what's a global vision? It's a word I made up. Amen. Yeah. Global means local and global. Amen. Yes. Everything we do here on this property and the 60th anniversary and uh, open house and Friday, that's a local outreach, amen? We want to reach out in the community. Yesterday, we had 35 people here, I think 35, 32, somewhere in there, good group out, out soul winning, inviting people and, uh, and knocking on doors. And I drove on Ironwood and there was this trash mounded all over Ironwood. Somebody had dropped a bunch of stuff out of the back of a truck or something going to the dump maybe, I don't know. And it just looked horrible. It just looked awful. And Moreno Valley, we already have a bit of a bad reputation, so let's not make it worse, amen? Mm -hmm. So I ran back to the church, grabbed some orange vests that we have for the parking lot guys and some trash bags. And on our way back from soul winning, I had all teenagers. So I put some orange vests on the older ones that I thought I trusted. <laughs> and the rest of them on the side of the road. And I said, let's clean up this mess from Moreno Valley, Amen. You know, I don't know, there's probably 13 teenagers in there. About four and a half minutes, they had it done. Yeah. Amen. They had it done, and you, would, you didn't even notice it, did you? Yeah. You drove right through it, probably, and didn't even know. That was your teenagers doing that. I want to do more stuff like that, be involved. But that takes money. Mm -hmm. We had a, three vans or two vans out running yesterday. 
There's some gas money and some maintenance. I started one of the vans this morning. It wouldn't start. Take some money. So we got a, a, local, a, a local ministry and then an, a, a missionary that we support all over the world. Thailand and Philippines and Chile. And these missionaries, we're investing dollars to them. And they're being our representation. They're in whatever country. I mean, we just had Nicole Condra that's going to be going to Romania and, and doing, working with the deaf there. We want to have that burden. Amen. You're a good amen, or the rest of you. Amen. We do, don't we? Don't you want to reach beyond what we can do right here? Unless you all want to go to Romania yeah. and eat bugs or whatever, I don't know. Now, then, then we got to open our wallet, amen? Yeah. I'm talking about money this morning. On Vision Sunday, well, to have a vision takes money. Yeah. It does. It just does. It takes some money. And then, lastly, right here, the next one over, it says building fund. Two years ago, we started really working this building fund. This church needs some space. This church needs some Sunday school classes. Yes. We meet right here in Sunday school at 10 o'clock a.m., all of us. I want a place for those college kids to, to meet, amen? Yeah. Candy's excited about that. I like that, one of my college students. I want a place where we could have some age differences, maybe. We could have a senior saints class and a not-so-senior saints class, amen? <laughs> and we could, we could have coffee and donuts in the room. See, I get... Tw- I get a little nervous about having it in this room. Does that make sense? I don't want, some of y'all are spilling it and donuts getting smeared all over. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm friendly and kind, but I don't want it in here if I can help it, you know? Yeah. I want this to look so pristine. But in a Sunday school classroom, it'd be nice, wouldn't it? We could have this small group of 20 or 30 people you'd get to know and fellowship with, and you could organize, bring in coffee and donuts, or somebody could bake something. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. And, and then you could have some class outings because you knew each other. You really could go skiing. Or you could all meet at somebody's house and, and knit. I don't know, whatever you do. <laughs> Something. Or, hey, brother so-and-so is having a problem in his backyard. Let's go help him cut down his tree. Or I don't know. You get to know each other that way. But we've got to have a place for that. Two years ago, I started working on a new building. I've been working on it. The paperwork, you don't even see this, this ball spot right here? <laughs> Two years of my life. And honestly, $35,000 of the churches. $35,000. And what do I have? I have this picture, and that picture, and another picture over there, and a stack of paperwork this high. And I know everybody at the city by the first name. I think they just see dollar signs when I walk in there, you know? But we have a plan now. We have a plan. You can see part of it back there. We have a plan. We have one bill right now that's due pretty quick here, about $2,000. And then after that's paid, first of, uh, let's see, January, February, March, end of February, Lord willing, we'll start the final step to actually pull permits for building. That's going to take money. This is what I'd like to ask you to do. (laughs) Tithe. If you don't tithe, start there. Just start there. 10% 10% of whatever the Lord gives you, give it to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Missions is more important, too. Yeah. I don't want some missionary on the foreign field starving to death because we can't pay him. Yeah. That's more important. Right. I would rather us wait on a building here. I've been waiting a long time, Lord. But wait. So you need to give here and give here. You say, how much? Well, you decide. Amen. What would the Lord have you to do? Right. What would be honoring and pleasing to him? We're going to have a Faith Promise Missions Conference. We'll talk about it, how to maybe think through that a little bit. But we give a missionary every month about $100. That's not a lot. That's not a lot. You probably spend that at Starbucks every month. (laughs) Well, Starbucks and Del Taco at least. (laughs) Amen? Some of you. So cut that out and give to missions. And then on top of that, you say three places, Pastor. I know. I know, it's the way the world works, isn't it? Visa's getting some from you. Costco's is getting some from you. Let's give the Lord the building fund something. You know what? If everybody in this room gave $20 a month, it would add up pretty doggone fast. You're like, really? Yeah, I can honestly say that. Two years ago when we started, there was nothing in it. Today, there's not a whole lot in it because we've been spending it. But at one point, there was $30,000 in that account. And it was over and above the budget. Does that make sense? That, this doesn't keep the lights on. This doesn't 
keep toilet paper in the bathroom and that kind of thing. This is over and above it. $20 a piece. Brother Tim did all that math one time for me. It adds up. Just give to that, whatever the Lord would have you give, and let's have a global vision. Amen. 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 He must increase, I must decrease. cut out Starbucks. <laughs> I don't know about you, but it wouldn't hurt me any. That's good. Whatever it is, this is what Vision Sunday is about. Get involved in that, give, be a part, and just praise the Lord what God's done. Amen. Yeah. And then at the end of 2019, guess what's going to happen? 2020. Ha, that's what's going to happen. You know what's going to happen? We're going to have another list like this yeah. of things that got done, yeah. of things that we can glorify the Lord for. Yes. I want to put on the, that list those two things. I want discipleship and something for the college kids this year, Amen. spiritually. So these are physical attributes. Here at this church, we need to be reaching out and being a part of that. You have my vision this morning? That's a good part of it. Good start on it. Don't forget FPU, Financial Peace University, tonight. Be out for that. Brother Joe, come and go. Amen. Amen. All right, let's Come all on. stand. Open our song books to page 439 as we sing Count Your Blessings. How appropriate. <laughs> when upon life's pillows you are tempest tossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Let's shake hands as the choir comes down. back to our seats to sing out on the last verse verse number four so amid the conflict whether great or small do not be discouraged god is over all count your many blessings angels will attend help and comfort give you to your journeys in count your blessings name them one by one count your blessings see what god Ushers come, they're trying to fight their way through the crowd here. I love that you guys are friendly, wanting to shake everybody's hand. Appreciate that. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, thank you for this uh, beautiful day, wonderful thing that you're doing here. Lord, I pray you continue to bless and work, and we would be right in tune with what you want. Lord, help us to have a bigger burden for this community, for the world. Help us to decrease and you to increase. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated.
we're having a little bit change of schedule. We're going to have our special now. So we're going to have Miss Linda sing um, because we want to get through the rest of our stuff. So there was a little bit of confusion when she sings. So we're putting people on the spot. So Miss Linda is ready to go. We appreciate that. And I was listening to her practice. It's a very, very good song. So sorry about that, Miss Linda and Brother Gary, changing our schedule. Thank you, Miss Linda. If you have Bibles, turn to John chapter 3. John chapter 3, just where we were a second ago. John chapter 3. And uh, I'm just going to read really the one verse. You've already read the verses there leading up to it. John 3 and verse 30. He must increase, but I must decrease. Amen. The ministry of John the Baptist was going, and it was uh, on its way. It's rolling here along, and John had been preparing for the way of Jesus. He had been baptizing and calling for people to repent of their sins, and the other Gospels portray John in quite an interesting way. He was kind of a unique guy, wasn't he? He kind of uh, dressed funny, amen, camel hair, and wearing a leather belt, and eating some interesting grasshoppers, it, might, it says there, and they have him interesting. John, Isaiah 40 and verse 30 quotes a prophecy that is fulfilled by John. John 40 verse 3 says, The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. He is the one that is coming before Jesus and saying, Jesus is coming. 
Jesus is coming. Get ready. He's coming. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all highlight Jesus being baptized by John. Quite an interesting thing. All the Gospels reveal that when when John baptized Jesus, the Holy Spirit did what? Descended down as a dove, right? In whom I am well pleased. So when someone came to John saying that others are going to Jesus to be baptized instead of you, John, that becomes this little bit of a... Can you believe Christians people nitpicking at each other? This is the first nitpicking right here in the Gospels, right? Well, I'm of this church and I'm of that church and I'm of... This is who baptized me. And, this is, and so there's this little strife here. And John quickly responds that Jesus is the Christ. Amen. He says, he's the Christ. I'm not him. Let them go to Jesus. They ought to go to Jesus. Amen. He talks about a joy he has in knowing that Jesus is Christ and his preaching is being fulfilled. You see all of this. John the Baptist then makes the statement, he must increase I must decrease. That's a profound statement, isn't it? Something to live by. Amen? It is the truth of the gospel. You and I could learn much from this attitude and idea. Christ must become greater, and I must become less. Well, how do you do that? Let's get where the rubber meets the road, right? How do you do that? How do you get practically do that? Over the next five weeks, we're going to talk about How do we do that? What does that look like? Jesus increasing and me decreasing. How does Christ become greater and I become, I just see this greater than, less than symbol, amen? There's some bumper stickers out there like that. I almost copied that, but then I thought that's too cheesy. (laughs) I'm glad you asked. How do you become greater than, less than? I want to share with you how to do that, how to begin that process today. First and foremost, in order for Christ to become greater, for us to become less, we must understand who Christ is, right? And you didn't know it, but last week I was preparing for this. Last week my message was Jesus is sovereign Lord and creator. Jesus is the light and life of the world, and Jesus is Savior. You've got to know those things before he can be greater than and you can become less than. If you understand who he is, it's somewhat natural for you to be like, wow. Amen? Isaiah said, when I came into his presence, I couldn't speak, and I fell before him. Wow. In modern vernacular, right? Wow. He's greater. He brings salvation. The Bible has hundreds of names for Jesus, right? You could name them over and over and over and Understanding who Jesus means that you have an understanding of what each of those names means. Many men, smarter men and women, have studied the names of Jesus for lifetimes. And you really could study for a long, long time. Scholars that have dissected and studied the scripture, examining the names of Jesus. But this morning, let's just take one of those names. And we could spend a lot more time than I'm going to take this morning on this one name. The name of Jesus... L-O-R-D, Lord. He's the Lord, amen? Yes, he is. In the New Testament alone, Lord is used 3,322 times in 3,058 verses. Think about that. There's 3,058 verses, and the word Lord is used 3,322 times. It's quite a bit. The dictionary defines Lord as a person who has authority, control, or power over others, a master, a chief, a ruler. With this definition in mind, making Jesus Lord means you are giving him authority, right? You are giving him authority, control, power over your life. Is this thing on? Hello? Hello? Oh, that one's on too. Hey, you're giving him, Lord. You're giving him power. You're giving him control. Have you come to the place in your life where you have allowed this to happen? Two things, and I'm getting ahead of myself, but I'm excited about it, okay? When you get saved, 
when you come to know him, if there's a point in your life where you trusted Christ as your personal Savior, he is your Lord. But there comes a point in your life where you have to give up and say, he is Lord. My kids, I am Lord. As long as my life let me, lets me be, I am Lord of my house. Amen? But there comes a point in every one of my kids' life where there's you and me, buddy. Right? This is my roof, my rules, my paycheck going into your belly, and this is the way it's going to be. And there's that clash, and it happens over and over and over, right? I have a 14-year-old and a 1-year-old. I'm not done. Some of you that have lived that. I'm assuming, because I look at my life, that I had clashes, yeah, every day until I moved out, and still have one now and then. Amen? Amen. And that is the Christian life. My will versus God's will. Am I going to let him? I don't want to take out the trash, Lord. And he says, you're going to take the trash out. You're either going to take the trash out or you're going to pay the price. I'll take the trash out. Amen? Over and over. That is the Christian life. And his selfish will versus what God wants. And I don't understand, Lord, why. Well, I don't understand. What do they say? Lord? Is he really Lord? If he really is Lord, if he really is Lord, then I have to let him be Lord. I have to say, I don't want to go 55 miles an hour. I like 65. But the law says, amen? And I could break that law. I could break that rule and sometimes get away with it. And then sometimes that nice fellow puts those bright lights on and pulls behind me and says, oh, you're the pastor at Lighthouse Baptist Church. Hmm, you should be a better example. Amen. Hasn't happened in a long time. Hallelujah. Whew. You know what I'm saying? Is he Lord or is he not? It's interesting to know that Jesus, that just because Jesus is Lord, he only becomes Lord of our life when we allow him to. John the Baptist simply stated, he must increase, I must decrease. If you allow Jesus to be the Lord of your life, you are allowing him to become greater. Romans 10 and verse 9 says it this way, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Can you answer the question when asked, if Jesus is Lord, is he Lord? How about Lord of your life? When? When? When did he become Lord of your life? Two, two, three answers here. He became Lord of your life when you got saved. But if you're honest, if you're a Christian here, he became Lord of your life. And then there was a point in your Christian walk where he really became Lord of your life. Okay, he became Lord of your life when he died on the cross, paid for sins, and you accepted that. And you said, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. Save me. Give me a home in heaven. When you prayed that prayer and asked him to, you, he became Lord. But we walk a few days. I have a one-year-old. I got, he got born. He came home. I fed him. I changed him my diaper. He's one and a half. And now we're having that I'm Lord. He learned this week the word no. I said, I said take, take your diaper to the trash. He's always done it. Take your diaper to the trash. No. Hmm. Really? One-year-old. Hmm. There was a point in your life after you got saved where God said, do this. Don't do that. Go talk to that person. Tithe. Give. And you went, no. And then you had it out, right? You and the Lord somewhere in the car in a church service, at a revival meeting, and he won. He always does. Just depends on how much you want to pay. Am I right? And he went, okay. Whew. He's Lord. Amen? Amen? There was a start to that somewhere in your Christian life. And then you've had minor skirmishes and battles all the way till you go to heaven. Amen? <laughs> But at some point, hopefully, if you haven't, you said, Lord, you're Lord. Every day we get up, we put our pants on, we go out, and we, 
we fight with the Lord a little bit here and there on this or that. But if you have it, it's called revival. It's called giving in to the Lord. It happens. But maybe there wasn't that point. Let's go back. Holy cow, time is flying. <clears throat> There's got to be a start here where you say, I give in. You're in charge. Or you say, I'm not saved. I'm on my way to hell. And I want to be in the family of God. I want to be saved. If you haven't made that decision, you've got to start there. Yes, but then 2 Corinthians 4 or 5 says, For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servant for Jesus Christ. There has to come a point where we say, it's not for ourselves, it's for him. Amen. Everything we say and do. 1 Peter 3.15 says, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, your Lord, and be ready to give an answer. Yes, Are you ready? Why do you go to church every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday? Why do you give that money to the church? It's crazy. It is crazy unless he's Lord. It doesn't make any sense. It's two plus two is eight. Unless it's God's math, and then it works. It's true. Can you answer the question if asked, is Jesus Lord? He must increase, I must decrease. Back to Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. Amen. There are two parts to being a Christian. We've already talked about it. First, accepting him as Savior. And then second, and sometimes much more difficult, you must make him Lord, the undisputed boss. There's just enough ego in each of us that we want control. And when I say ego, I mean E-G-O, edging God out, right? Right? Edging God out. We have enough ego in us that we have to, what the Bible says, crucify our flesh every day. To get up and say, no, he's in charge. No, he's in charge. Crucifixion is a painful death. It's not an easy thing. It's not that you like up, get up and go, yay, today I'm going to crucify my flesh. That'll be fun. No. You drag yourself to that cross and nail yourself up there and say, God, you're in charge. He's in charge. And you have to do it every day, and it takes every ounce of breath that you have to get that ego out, fight for the control. When you, act, when you make Jesus your Lord, your life, you give up control in a number of areas, but we're going to talk about three real quick this morning. Jesus, not you, decides where you go. Jesus decides, not you, where you will go. If it was in my flesh this morning when the alarm clock went off at 6 a.m. on a Sunday morning, a weekend, do you know where I would have been? Yeah. Until about eh, 30 minutes ago. Amen? Maybe not. I have kids. You're right. No. Decides where you go. Mark 8, 34 says, And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Mark 10, 21. Then Jesus, being, being, beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, that thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, take up your cross, and follow me. You say, Pastor, it's hard to follow Christ. It is. And I get so distracted by others. Man, that church is full of hypocrites. And, and man, that, that, I don't like that guy that snores next to me in the seat when I'm at church. And, and I don't like those kids that run through there and I trip on them. There's never a donut when I get to the donut table. They're all gone by then. And the coffee, whoever makes the coffee, it's sad, pathetic. So it's just I, it's an awful coffee. You know what it is? You're following the donut ministry. This church is not perfect. But when you're him increasing and me decreasing, you know what you're doing? You're following him. This is what happens. 
And this is what happens. I wish this was filled to the brim. Can you imagine this is filled to the brim? Like just right ready to, I can't fill it up. Fill it, it's filled to the brim. Can you do that? And if I asked you, if this was filled to the brim, to walk around this auditorium, what would you do? <laughs> Spill it. I appreciate the honesty. <laughs> this was filled to the brim and over. If you're filled to the brim of the Holy Spirit, filled with the Lord, you're walking with him every day, you're like this. And you know what? When you walk around like this, focused on the Lord, him increasing, me decreasing, I don't notice that there wasn't enough donuts at the donut table. I don't notice that that kid kicked me on the way in. I don't notice that there wasn't a good parking spot. I had to park way over there. And that pastor asked me to give tithes, offerings, missions, and I'm just focused on the Lord. Ooh, don't let him. Ooh. He must increase. I must decrease. That's good water. Cool, clear, refreshing. We need to do that in the world. We need to walk out of this place today going, <laughs> the traffic won't bother you quite as much. Your boss won't bother you quite as much. That paycheck won't bother you quite as much. And on and on and on. And that Fox News, CNN News, well, I just turned it off a long time ago because I got better things to do. Amen? Who are you following? Who are you staring at? This, this church is filled with imperfect, messed up. Nobody's going to say amen, amen. <laughs> it's full of them. And I'm their leader and I'm the worst one of them. But we focus on the Lord. You know what? There's a lot that can get done. Amazingly. Jesus decides where you go and Jesus decides the price you'll pay. 1 Corinthians 6.20 For ye are bought with the price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit. He's yours. If he wants you to pay a price or not pay a price, it's up to him. Then turn with me to Mark, Matthew 13.45 and we're almost done. <coughs> Matthew 13.45 Is he Lord? If he is Lord, then Jesus decides where you will go. Jesus decides the price you'll pay. And lastly, Jesus, not you, decides the person you will become. Matthew 13, 45. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, something of value, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold, what does it say the next four words? All that he had. Let's say it together, ready, begin. All that he had and bought it. All that he had. If you want to know the cost of making Jesus Lord of your life, it will cost you all that you have. Some of you just had a heart attack. A little stroke right there in church. But what does it say? He was seeking a, something goodly, a pearl of great price is what he found. The value of what you give away is nothing compared to what you get in return. Yes, the investment you give is this big. What you give, get back from God, he sold all that he had. He had a hot tip, a stock option that was on fire. And it was Lord Jesus Christ. Actually, it's out of the fire, amen? It's heaven. It's eternal life. It's the Lord dictating, I get to follow the Lord. I get to pay his price. Boy, I don't know what that means. This man valued it so highly that he considered it worth everything that he had. Does your Christianity, your walk with the Lord, value it everything that you have? Does it? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think, well, you're getting ahead of me now. So here's the question. What do you value? What, do you, what value do you place on your relationship with Jesus Christ? Is it more or less or less or more? This man believed that the return would be greater th than his investment. Do you believe that? That the return from Jesus Christ will be greater than anything you could give in this life. 
Salvation is free, but making Jesus your Lord of your life demands that you surrender all to him. All to Jesus I surrender. It's not just a cute song and invitation. It's part of the Christian life. Are you ready for that? Are you willing? Does anybody have a dollar bill I could borrow this morning? One dollar bill? Can I borrow it this morning? One dollar bill? All right, here, Miss Miss Sweetie. Thank you so much. I am going to keep it. That's good. That's good. Does anybody have a hundred dollar bill I could borrow? No, I'm serious. Anybody have a hundred dollar bill? Do you really? Do you really? She just. We know who we're going to lunch with today. Amen. Look at this. Frank has. I can't take from from you twice. What does Frank have? This is cute. This isn't real, brother. Did you print this this morning? Absolutely. Still wet. I can't do this, brother. I'm just lying. I have one, too. I'll give yours back. Uh, you see, I'm giving it back, everybody. This is on camera. I'm giving his $100 bill back. I'm using my own, okay? Sorry, babe. This is a $100 bill. I know. <laughs> yeah, I'm in trouble. When we get saved, we go looking for salvation we get saved. He gives us everything. Amen? And then he says in return, serve me. He must increase. I must decrease. And we, if we're smart, if you're smart, we go, well, it's 100 bucks. It's a lot of money. You're not going to college anymore, babe. It's yours. I'm just putting this in a monetary form so you can see it, okay? Talking about your life, every decision you make. He must increase, I must decrease, it's yours. This is what happens though. Things get rough, difficult, hard. Follow me where? You want me to pay what price? I have to get up at 9 a.m. to come to church? Sunday night too? It's been a long week, Pastor. Oh man, I had to work 40 hours this week. Missions? I can't go to Starbucks now. <laughs> and we start looking at that $100 bill going, and this is what we do. I'm just being honest. In this room right here today, we don't go, Lord, I want it back. We don't do that. We do not do that. Nobody in this room, I promise you, doesn't do that. You love the Lord. What we would do is this. Lord, you can have this much. And I'll keep this much. Yeah. Woohoo! Who wants to go to lunch today? Yeah. On me. Anybody? Yeah. Let's go to Sizzler. My treat. I'm going to walk into Sizzler, say, I want the steak dinner, and here you go. And that lady behind the counter is going to go, uh huh, sure. <laughs> the visa, MasterCard, maybe? Uh, um, manager? She's going to laugh at this, isn't she? Yes. She's going to laugh at this. But we hoard this. Ooh, I'm doing something for the Lord, but I'm keeping something for me. This is worthless. If I go to the bank, I'm going to go over to Chase Bank today, Provident Bank. I'm walking in the teller and say, all right, give me 50 bucks. She's going to, uh-huh, okay, sure. Uh, security guard, can you help this young man out? This is no good unless it's whole. That's right, amen. You know what's amazing? It's no good unless it's whole. And your life is no good to the Lord unless it's whole. Now this dollar, hundred dollar bill is pretty pathetic, pretty sad now, isn't it? Tattered and torn. Some of our lives have been pretty tattered and torn, Amen. I could even say not even whole. But God delights in not the whole. He delights in taking this, your life that has little or no value to anyone but him. I can take this home today, and I will. Put some scotch tape on this bad boy. And they'll probably take it back, amen? I'm hoping. I know the Lord will. 
But if I give him this and I keep this, it's completely worthless. So is he Lord of your life? He has to have the whole. He must increase. I must decrease. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Salvation is free, but making Jesus Lord of your life demands that you surrender your all to him. Your all has to go to him. Are you ready for that? Are you willing? Father, work in hearts and lives today. Lord, help you to increase and us to decrease. Help us not to surrender a part of it or a little bit of it or most of it, but Lord, take our lives and use it. Use it as you see fit. Guide and direct and work. Do something miraculous. We're trusting you. We're investing in your, into you and you promised that you would give a great return. It would be a pearl of great price and it is. Lord, help us to not be stingy and hold back, but to give everything to you and see you do something miraculous this morning. In Jesus' name, let's all stand. This piano begins to play. If the Lord's worked in your heart, we have an invitation here. You come and dedicate to him. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. We got plenty of time. The Lord's working. The invitation is open. You come. Is it truly all on the altar? I surrender. Forsaken, take me, Jesus, take me now. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. All. I surrender, make me Savior, holy thine. Let me feel the Holy Spirit, truly know that thou art mine. I surrender all, I surrender all, all. seated. We have lots to go over this morning, and I, I'm so excited this morning to announce that Lori Chandler comes this morning to join our church. Amen. Can I get a hearty amen? Amen. amen? amen. Lori was a member years ago, some time ago, and uh, my son is named after her son. Amen. I'm proud to say that. Good to have you back. You get double tithe, though. <laughs> Just kidding. Come up here after the service. There's going to be a lot going on, but come up here, shake her hand, get to know her, welcome her into the family. Brother Danny. Amen. All right, a couple things I do want to say after. Okay. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Looking forward to the parking lot ministry today. It's going to be good, it's going to be fun to greet everybody, all right. <laughs> good morning, good to have you here, good to see you this morning. Go ahead and park right over there, Byron.
gonna be a good day. Looking forward. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Come Not on the in. ushers. They always sit me by the weirdos. I think there's one right. Good morning. Good morning. Good to have you here. Are you new? Yes. Thank you for being here. Let me get you a welcome packet. Let me give you one of these. Have you gotten to coffee and donuts yet? Not yet. All right, let's take you right over there. Come on. They forgot this senior breakfast again. Come on in. What the heck? Let me get you a cup and uh, get you some coffee here. Maybe a donut. The donuts were cold and so was the coffee. Hey, good morning. Good to morning. see you, buddy. Good to have you here. Hello. Let me get you a, a sticker. Okay, let's see. Here you go. All right. Right there you go. Your class is going to be right over there. Okay, good to have you today. Thank you. It's okay. What do you got there? What do you got? There? What do you got? Is that a cookie? Oh, oh, oh. Oh. oh, is that a good cookie? Look what I found. Look what I got. I got a block. Hey, Leslie. How you doing, buddy? You're not grumpy, too, are you? I don't understand why they're still looking for more children workers. I pushed me through there. I pushed me through there. I hung him on the line. Today's message is going to be boring. What are those two excited about? Good morning. Good to see you. Glad you're here. Turn your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. Why does this pastor always look so tired? What a good day. I cannot believe what a great Sunday it was. I'm just so glad just to be able to do the Lord's work and be involved. Thank the Lord for all that he's doing. I never get anything out of church. Why do I even come here? Amen. Amen. That was good. Our service is going to be a little bit different, and we're a little bit over, so what we're going to do, I'm going to ask the ushers not to let anybody out the back doors when you dismiss. We're going to go out these side doors a little bit, and there's a bunch of booths. There's a lot of ministries that are not represented, by the way, in this video, um, so please take, take a look at the ministries out there. Sign up for a ministry or a couple of ministries, and what you do is you sign up for one month, and it starts February, so if it's a ministry, you'll sign up now, and it'll start, you could... You could choose February as a month, or March as a month, or April. And what we'll do is we'll take all those names, we'll give it to the people that are in, so in charge of those ministries, and then they'll call you, our office will call you and say, hey, don't forget, you're signed up for this ministry, it starts this day, all kinds of stuff. So what we're going to do right now, I'm going to dismiss any of the leaders. If you have a booth, so Brother Frank, anybody else, if you have a booth out there, go ahead and head out to those. And also when you go out, you're going to get a new calendar from our church um, about our vision and some of the things we have on there, um, some other packets of information. Um, I'm excited about everything we've gotten into. It's been a great, I'm excited about our pastor message. Pastor, I'm going to have you come out these doors too, and that way he can greet you. Um, if you had to pick up your, your children like me, go ahead and uh, get your children, then come up and sign up for a ministry. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for this time. Lord, I pray that uh, you'd help us um, as we um, desire this church to serve you. Uh, we need your help in that area. And Father, there's many ministries and ways. Um, I think of the children of Israel, Lord. They uh, uh, were freed from the 
nation of Egypt for the purpose of serving you. And Lord, as a free country here in America, I pray that this church, everyone here, would be serving you. I pray this in Christ's name. Two other things that I forgot. All right, you can look up here. Make sure you read this bulletin. There is church tonight, so please come back. FPU starts tonight. I'll read this bulletin. There's a lot of things that I did not announce that are still in their upcoming events, uh, like Men's Bible Study. Pastor, is there anything else that we need to announce? Or All right, he's good. All right, you are dismissed. Thank you for being here. Go ahead and get your children, and then sign up for something. If you don't have any children, just go right out there.